गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई होप माई वॉइस इज ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई गेस दीम विल हैंडल द इशू आई गेस सम स्टूडेंट्स आर अनेबल टू ज्वाइन एनी वेज वी विल स्टार्ट विद टूडेज क्लास आई कैन सी नायोमी हेयर नाउ सो आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड जस्ट लेट मी क्लैरिफाई यू टूडेज एजेंडा वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द remaining days in your exam and how you're going to manage your syllabus because there are students who've joined us recently so this orientation is for the reset batch okay and the students from another batch that is the regular batch who started in time with me they will also benefit from this session in a way that if you have not followed the planner if you have not followed the planner then this particular session will give you another planner where we are going to see how can we complete the syllabus in the remaining days and when i say remaining days let us count uh let us count how many days are basically remaining in our exam so our first our first exam of fr that is going to be in june is on i guess 10th of june and today uh, it's 21st of april so approximately we can say that we are left with around 45 to 50 days right the full month of uh, this may and then we have few days of june as well and nine days of okay so it's ninth okay naomi so ninth uh, of june so basically 45 to 50 days approximately so that's what we are going to talk about how to complete this in 45 days now as we all know that our results were out the results were out on monday right and there were many uh, you can say the good positive outcomes which we saw from my batch where uh, the you know there were scores like 69 was the highest score and uh, then there were students who passed fairly with fairly good marks and if i say that there were around 30 to uh, 35 students were there and out of them around easily 29 passed so that's that's what our results look like so you can calculate the percentage but what i'm trying to say here is that if we follow the correct strategy we can actually score a good mark and we can pass the paper because the passing ratio of this fr is really good the passing ratio is 50% so 50% is like a big deal if you talk about difficult exams like uh, icai so if you know about it it's about indian chartered accountancy they have pass percentages of around 2 to 3% so if you have such competitive exams in your country as well you must be aware that they they do the scaling where they don't let anyone pass if they don't fall in that 2 to 3% so basically we are getting the essence that this paper is not that difficult because it's related to accounts number 1 secondly it has a really good pass percentage of 50% and of course since you will be taking classes if you are already enrolled or you are planning to enroll if you have uh, any plans to enroll so that means you are taking classes you are taking guidance and already this exam is about accountancy which you have already studied many times and then also the pass percentage is 50% so it makes this exam easily passable but before we know how to pass this paper we should know how to not fail this paper because there are some mistakes if uh, you are from reset batch so you must have failed your exam and then you're reattempting it so there are students who've joined us there's a different whatsapp group created for them so if you have failed the paper once and you're reattempting it so let us look at let us look at the reasons of that failure so the first reason which as a tutor i have seen and i've talked to students they've told me about it that what went wrong with them first of all it's procrastination might sound very kiddish but that's true if you have enrolled for the course as we know our course at wifi it's recorded right it's recorded plus live classes so in the live classes 
genuinely if you guys have enrolled with me from the very first day you must have seen if in the total batch we have 35 students in the live class you can only find maximum 10 to 12 students others don't join due to their own reasons but the point is as a tutor i can just motivate you to join i can just persuade you i can give you some uh, incentives that in the form of attendance and the credit which we give uh, in the gamification model so that's what we can do at our end. But you are a professional student, right? You are studying the ACCA. So you are working towards a profession. So if you don't have that zeal in yourself, then nobody can help you. I can motivate you. I can guide you. I can tell you the best practice, but I cannot be there sitting, uh, you know, around you with a, uh, you can say, stick that you have to study. That's, that's what we used to do when you were around 10 to 12 years of age right so that's not the case anymore so procrastination keeping these things till the end you know depending on the last days that i will do this towards the end i will just you know we keep on creating stress on ourselves like we keep consolidation for the end we keep eps is 33 usually for the end so this is how the stress you know accumulates and you are not able to complete this syllabus on time and henceforth you're not able to pass the paper because stress is the major factor if you see your exam and you get stressed i would say that it's the biggest failure whatever might be the score if you see your exam and you get stressed that is the biggest failure because you should have been prepared so much towards the exam that whenever i see my question paper i'm like i'm familiar with it it, it shouldn't stress me out. I should be excited to solve it. I don't know if it ha happens with you or not. Whenever I used to give my exam, I was always excited to solve that exam. I was curious that what will be asked. I was never stressed because I knew that I'm well prepared. I've done my best. So I have given mocks. I've given assignments. So I was always excited to solve the paper. So if this excitement is there, while you see any assignment, while you see any question paper, that means you're do doing good, you're going on the right track. So that's the first reason for failure. That is procrastination, pushing things till the end. So please avoid this. Still you have time, you can, ca uh, you can catch hold of the passing time and you can fully utilize it. Then if I talk about the second factor, what can be the reason of failure? No proper practice. Now, when I say proper practice, let me explain this in detail to you. Let me just create a little bit of more space. Okay. So when I talk about practice, let me explain this on board to you. I had a student, I wouldn't name, but that student was very active on the live classes. Okay. He or she was giving proper responses, prompt responses. Uh, whenever I used to ask a question, like I, when I'm solving, if you're enrolled student, you must be knowing that whenever we are solving it questions, I ask you that uh, what, you know, what would be the answer? I ask you to brainstorm. So there that kid was doing really good. But he or she ended up getting a 49. Okay. Now this 49 score, what could have been the reason? Because what that student was doing Whenever I used to ask a question from the kit, they had their kit open at their end. They were looking at the answers and they were replying to me on the live classes. And he or she admitted it. She uh, told me that, yes, I used to do this. And whenever I was doing the live classes, I was brainstorming the kit questions with you. He or she was opening the kit the area which that question related to and then answering me in the session. So I'm not going to judge you, right? That whether you know the kit question or not. I am no one. I'm just a tutor and I'm going to teach you you're paying for the service. So I'm not going to judge you whether you know this question or not. So what's the point 
what's the point that you are answering to me in the class when you don't know the answer so it's 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 what we have to rectify here you are just being you can say uh, untruthful to you when you are doing this thing when you're looking at the answer and then answering whether it's in the test whether it's in an assignment okay whether it's in any mock so this is something which you're doing bad to your own self it's not something which will help you in the exam so whenever you're solving the questions whether it's in the live class whether it's at home in the practice sessions or whether it is in the mocks and the assignments the only way you can secure a pass is doing a truthful honest practice see this is something which not every tutor talks about as a student we all know that we do leave some loopholes where we do see the answer sometimes if we are not sure of if we are solving a paper mock or uh, you know we are doing practice as soon as we see the question we don't understand what's there within it we quickly move towards the answer because the answers are readily available for the kit questions for the past papers now what happens how this thing harms you let me explain you that as well when you go to the answer you get familiar to it not to the answer but the familiarity to the process of looking at the answer so when you will be sitting in the exam environment this is you giving the exam when you will see the question in the exam what will happen you will have the addiction the tendency that i want to see the answer now also because that's what i used to do in the live classes that's what i used to do in my practice sessions that's what i used to do in my mocks and assignments so i'm very accustomed to looking at the answers now when you will have this tendency but in the question paper in the real exam you won't have any answer you will not have any back of the kit or you cannot google so you cannot do anything basically so there you have to use your brain and you can only use that brain if you have used it previously while answering the questions in the practice sessions mocks and live classes so honest practice not just practice but honest practice is what will make you pass so be honest to yourself you're not going to impress any tutor by doing good in the assignments and mocks i'm not going to judge you if you do bad i will guide you further that how to improve this so just be honest to yourself and do the better best practice okay so that's one of the reasons of failures and the way you can overcome that i'm just not giving you the reasons for the failures but i'm also giving you that how can you overcome it then what else is the reason for a uh, failure which we should be avoiding the third one so procrastination no proper practice no mock now see your exam is cb right you should have practice in the typing because uh, when we are you know writing with the pen on the paper there the uh, process of writing is quite easy because you know we are accustomed to it since ages and uh, whatever we think we just pen it down but that's not the case when we are typing it out so when you're typing it out you need to make sure that you have better practice of it beforehand i will give you my example i always share it with my students that i gave my first cbe paper as a student and that was of double a at that time only the skill level was cbe okay when i qualified only the skilled level was cbe rest was written so i gave my first cbe paper as double a now double a was something in which i scored i guess around 70 marks and uh, there what happened there were long questions on audit risk right if you are aware of double a fit paper there are long questions of audit risk there is a uh, procedures question the control part all of that the test of control so these all questions 30 and 20 markers they used to haunt me but with practice i i got accustomed to it but then when i was typing it the first mock which i gave it should have ended in 3 hours it took me to my surprise it took me 4 hours one mock one paper took me 4 hours and i realized and it was just 5 days before the exam 
and I realized I have the knowledge, I know how to write, but the point is I'm not able to write it on time. So what's, what's the point? So how am I going to improve this? I gave the second mock. In the second mock, I completed it in three hours and 30 minutes. I said, it's still bad. I gave the third mock. It took me three hours on point. And when I sat in my actual exam, I completed it 30 minutes before the exam. Can you imagine double A paper 30 minutes before the exam and getting a 70? Now that's how you have to work on your weaknesses. There's no one who's going to tell you. You are a professional student, you are doing ACCA. So it's your lookout that you find your weakness and you work on it. If you have a guide, I didn't have a guide. I used to give the mocks myself. So if you have a guide, you can also share your weakness with your guide and they will further help you to improve it. So it's your way that you have to analyze yourself and by giving a mock only, you will realize what is your weakness. Sometimes your weakness is case study reading. That whenever I see a case study, I get confused. I don't know how to accumulate the information. So right now in FR, we just have 20 marker case study. Later on, you will have 50 marker case studies, even 100 marker case studies in SBL. So you should get that way or you can say the way of comprehension, the comprehension skills. So if you are lacking in that, we'll talk about it. You tell me that this is your weakness. I will work on that with you. So the point is that you have to reflect on your performance. And how can you reflect on your performance? Giving a mock on time. And that's why we always should use the mock way before the exam. So if your exam is on 9th of June, our mock will be held around 23rd of May. Right, so you will have ample of time to improve on your weaknesses. So first complete the syllabus, practice the questions, do everything, then give the assignments and the mocks and you will get to know that what is lacking. Right, so that is also a reason for the failure. Now, lastly, I would share the reason, uh, which is the biggest reason for failure, according to me, that is cramming. Now, cramming part is something which I have seen students uh, following very much because FR is something with lots of rules, with lots of standards, regulations, that this is how it has to be done. What is going into which statement? Statement of p &L or statement of other comprehensive income? How the things are happening? What is getting added? What is getting deducted? Transaction cost will be capitalized or it will not be capitalized. So there are many, many rules. And when there are many, many rules, there is a big tendency that you will end up cramming those rules. But just honestly tell me when you're attending my lectures, okay? The students who are here with me uh, from long time who have uh, attended my lectures, you must have got the essence that I never motivate you for cramming the concept. I always tell you that what is the reason, even if it is not given in your Kaplan text, I tell you what can be its commonsensical reason for that rule to be made. Why the thing have gone to PNL? Why the thing has gone to OCI? Why it is being added? Why it is being deducted? Right. So I always tell you the reason. So if you don't know the reason, there's no point. Then you're just like a, I don't know if you know about it, a parrot who knows everything, who will just speak whatever you speak, he will just repeat after you. So I don't want you to be a parrot because parrot can just utter the information. He cannot analyze, he cannot apply. So please avoid that you cram any concept. Because in the paper, they won't ask you a direct question. Never. They will not ask you that what is the subsequent treatment of IS-16. You must have crammed it. You must have just, you know, inhaled that information, ate that information with your breakfast. But that won't help. They will help you only if you have understood the concept and you are able to apply it in the case study. So cramming any question like you, uh, you are you're solving the kit. I've seen students, they cram the type of question also. That if such a question comes up, this is how I have to follow the technique. No, that is also incorrect. If you're not cramming the concept, but you're cramming the past 
papers, the past questions, just to know that this is how I will, you know, apply it in the paper. That that is also incorrect. Don't cram the application. Don't cram the concept. I'll tell you, uh, if you have given your FM paper, there is a concept of internal rate of return, and there is in the PM there is a concept of this variances. I'm telling you my story because today it's a general class, so I will be just talking to you. So there are these two concepts. I don't know if you're aware of it, but there are these two concepts and they have a formula for it. Okay, so if you have given these two papers, you must be knowing the formula or you must have read the formula. For the variances also, there is a formula, like for all types of variances, there's a formula. For IRR also, there's a formula. I as a student, when I was studying, I never crammed these formulas. My peers told me that these formulas would also be there in the formula sheet. I said, but how can you just read a formula and you can just go there and calculate it and come? Like, what is the reason? How, why do we calculate IRR in this way? Why do we calculate the variances in this way? So there is always this why. And if you know this why, mind you, you cannot ever fail in any paper. Howsoever tricky the question paper is, howsoever the tricky case study is, you will always be able to comprehend it, analyze it and apply your skills there. So make sure you know this why. Because if I know why this is happening, I would know that if situation is not this. So for example, they say, on the red light traffic rules, on the red light, you have to stop your car. If there is a person who just knows that, okay, on the red light, I have to stop the car. If that traffic policeman, he just knows the rule, he has crammed the rule. He doesn't know why is this happening. So whenever there will be a red light, he will expect that all the traffic will stop. But just in case there is an ambulance, or there are extraordinary situations. There is a car with a heart patient. He won't let them pass even because he has just cramped that if there is a red light, the car has to stop. But what is the reason behind that rule? The safety of the citizens. So if there is a heart patient here, his safety should be the priority of this traffic policeman. So he will alter the rule for him. So you should always know that why the rule exists. It, it, is, not, it is not something like uh, if you don't follow the rule, you will be punished. It's always that you should be following the best principles in the life or in any conceptual area like financial reporting. You should be following the principles, the reason, the logic behind that rule should be met. The objective behind that rule should be met. So even in the IFRSs, if we see that you know, that's what conceptual framework tells you. In FR, it's not that much relevant, but in SBR, you will see. Sometimes you also go against these standards just so as to, uh, you know, apply with the conceptual framework. You also criticize the standards, that the standard goes against the conceptual framework because we are broad people. We are not narrow-minded that if the rule is met, then only we'll do this. We will take everything we will consider everything holistically. We will see whether the objective behind that rule is being met or not. That's that's how you have to think about the bigger picture. So don't be a parrot. Know the concept. Know the reason. And if, if you know the reason, you will never forget that concept ever. There will be no, you can say, um, burden on you to cram the information or to accumulate the information in your mind. So just know the concept, the reason, and that's it. You'll be able to apply it just with good practice, honest practice. So are we clear on these reasons of failures? I hope it made sense to all of you and you will take care of all of them. Did you understand all of the reasons we discussed? Right? So great just take note of these, okay? These are not normal talks we are doing today. It's something which can save your one quarter. It's something which students, they get fail marks. You can say at 45, 46, 49, they don't follow these. They learn it after a failure, but you guys can understand it from today itself. 
and you can avoid that heartbreaking situation of a 49. Okay, so let's move ahead. How can we overcome uh, these reasons of failure? Of course, we can overcome these reasons of failure with very easy techniques. So first of all, we will be following a plan. So you have to avoid procrastination. So even if let's suppose I give you weekly goals. So every student here will have different challenges in their life. They might be working, they might be studying further studies, or they might be, you know, having some family issues or anything. There are students, you know, I had a student and she was 57 years old uh, and she studied audit from me way back and she was having like four grandchildren also. So she was having less absorption power, but yes, she managed to pass. So there are various situations. We have students from various countries. So there are various situations each one of you is facing. So if that is the case, I would say I give you weekly goals. I discount all those situations within that week. If you're not able to give enough time on Monday, if you're not able to give enough time on Wednesday, it's okay. Not all days are same. It's You cannot expect yourselves to uh, study, let's suppose, for 10 hours every day. That is unrealistic. I agree to that. So there will be days you'll study more. There will be days you will study less. That is human tendency. That is human behavior. So don't take guilt of that. But just make sure that in a week, you get enough of those days when you study more. Maybe you study on Saturday and Sunday if you're working, but the plan which is given to you, that should be completed. If you're going according to the plan, you're not procrastinating, I can assure you, you will pass. And you're doing honest practice. See, if you don't do honest practice, I cannot help you. You submit me an assignment. If I see a correct answer, I will be very happy to mark it correct. But if you have looked at the answer and then marked it, then, then it's not something which I can help you with. Right? So follow the plan. Do the honest practice. Give all the mocks, assignments which are given to you. Keep in touch with your tutor. Now, when I say keep in touch with your tutor, there's a WhatsApp group for you. The students who are enrolled, whether you are from reset batch or the normal batch, there is a WhatsApp group. The TA is there. I am there. You just text on that, whether it's a concept related query, whether it's an anxiety which you're facing or whether it's a discipline issue which you're facing, just text on the group. We all are on the same boat and I am here to guide you for that. Okay. That you don't sink or you don't drown in that syllabus. So I want you to sail through. And I will be able to help you if you communicate. So it's, I'm very happy that there are students who regularly attend the classes. I can see their names here. I won't name you, but I know that you all guys uh, are attending the classes regularly. So that's a big deal. You are following the plan. That's what it suggests. So just keep on the same track. Keep on communicating. Keep on attending the live classes. And that's how you'll be able to sail through. Till date, for the normal batch, we've completed single entity, right? We've completed the single entity part. Next week, we'll be moving on to the group accounts. And when we will move to the group accounts, that will cover 70% of your syllabus, like more than 70, I would say 80% for the normal students. For the reset batch, I will discuss how to complete it. But the students who have already studied, you will be done with the 80% of your syllabus next week. So that means if you were on track with me, you will have ample and ample of time for your revision, for your practice and anything you want to do or you want to reflect on your performance, you will have ample of time for that. So that's how you will overcome the reasons for failure. So now I will show you a planner which is being made for um, the students who have recently joined and for the students who have not followed the previous planner due to their reasons, any reason. So I would say if you want to pass honestly, the remaining 45 days, many students say, ma'am, is it enough to pass in uh, 45 days? No, it's not enough. It's just enough if you follow this plan. If you deviate even 1% from it, 
I have no guarantee. Because 45 days, we have a tight schedule. Let's accept that. Okay, be realistic. Accept the truth that 45 days is quite less. So we will have to put an extra effort. And if you want to do this qualification, this is worth that extra effort. When you get that 50 plus score, you will be proud of yourself and you will be, you can say, appreciating yourself for putting that extra inch of effort. So maybe you'll have to sacrifice a few bits, maybe your social life, maybe uh, just one or two dinners, breakfast, lunches with your friends. Maybe that is what you will have to sacrifice for the upcoming 45 days, but that will be worth it. So let us see what will be our agenda. So our recent batch started on 18th of April. Okay, so I can see some students here like Ali Rifaz, Alhaji, I guess. So you guys are from the recent batch, right? So it started on 18th of April. And that's what you are supposed to do. From 18th to 22nd of April, you are supposed to attend the recorded lectures of NCA. To be honest, these lectures, if you can put six hours a day, can be completed in one single day. Even if you start today, by tomorrow, you can be done with these lectures. I'm not telling you to read any book. No need to get into the study text now. There's no time left for the study text. Forget it. Just read, just attend the classes available on the portal. And if time allows you, Go for the test your understanding questions in the study text, if time allows. If not, right now you can leave it as well. So just go through the recorded uh, material available on the portal. Okay. Okay, Malibu, I'll get, that, uh, get back to you on that. So let's first discuss this planner. So NCA, non-current assets, IS-16, intangibles, impairment, government grants, borrowing cost, investment property, held for sale. 22nd April, that is tomorrow, we should be done with it. I've made this planner from 18 to 22nd. If even you start today, in one day, if you can put six hours, you can complete it. How can you complete it? Put the speed at 1.5 times on the portal. Put your headphones on, okay? Take a register or anything you want to make notes on and just attend the class. That's how you can just complete the recorded content and make sure you understand that, okay? It, it shouldn't be that uh, you're just listening to it just for the sake of listening, just for the sake of completing the lecture and uh, making yourself happy that, yes, I have completed this, but actually you don't attend it. So I don't want you to go into that situation where you just listen something, but you don't absorb that. So there should be proper, proper absorption of the concept. Then the second thing which you will do is conceptual framework, other standards, and this. These are very small standards, so you can complete it within one day or also twenty. Uh, I mean two days, twenty third and twenty fourth. The recordings are available. Then single entity concepts. These will be completed by. 21st, that is, these will be completed by 1st May. By 1st May, that means if you start on 25th April, till 1st May, you will complete all these standards, just the recordings, just the recordings, okay? And we already held live classes for these concepts. You can find it on the portal as well. You can find the live class, the question practice related to the single entity on the portal. Then you will do group accounts. So group accounts will be done by 7th of May. It will take you seven days, just the recorded content and then attending the live class of it. Then we will have uh, on 28th of April, we will have a live class on group accounts. Those who will be done with the group accounts can attend this. Those who will not be done with the group accounts, they can attend the recording of this class. Statement of cash flow, not so important topic, but still for interpretation and uh, statement of cash flow, I've given you five days from 8th till 12th of May, you'll be done with it. So if you even start today, according to this plan, by putting an extra inch of effort, you can be done with your syllabus 
by 12th of May, right? And that is, I would say, a very good deal. The students who've been following the previous planner, they will be done with the syllabus by 5th of May. But the ones who will start late, that is from today, they can also be done with the syllabus by 12th of May. What we are doing is we are following a smarter approach. We are not mentioning any study text here. We are not uh, doing anything extra. All we are doing is watching the classes because that's how you, you know, do the smart work. If you have paid for a course, let's use it for the good use. So just watch the recordings and you'll be done with the syllabus by 12th of May. And then you will attend the kit debrief classes which are available. After 12th of May, you will start with the solving of the kit long questions. Uh, and I must assure you here that when you will watch the recordings of these topics, together with that recording, you will also find assignments, their debriefs. You will also find some kit questions being discussed, MCQs being discussed within these recordings only. So just follow that and then attend the kit question debrief section and make sure you complete your kit, Kaplan kit, at least once before your exam. So if you complete the syllabus by 12th, I would say that you should be done with your kit at least by 23rd of May. 11 to 12 days more. So then we will have our final mock. The date will be announced. Then we will have our mock debrief and then our exam will be on 9th of June. We will also have our revision and this revision will be after 12th of May, where once you will be done with the syllabus, I will take live sessions where we will study FR once again, fast track revision, live class, three hours a day, we will be doing the concepts and we will also solve past papers. So this is how WIFI, this is how I am going to help you or I am planning to help you with your exam for the June attempt. So now I will get back to the questions of the students, which I can see on the chat box. So Malibu has asked a very relevant question that whenever he attends the class, everything is clear. But when I go back and do questions on my own, everything becomes so new and tricky. So that's what actually the fact is, Malibu, that when you're holding someone's finger and you're walking, for once, it feels like it's very easy to walk. If you have ever, uh, you know, drive any uh, cycle or vehicle, if someone else is sitting with you or they're helping you drive it, it seems very easy. The moment they leave, it feels like, you know, we're not able to do that. It's very tricky or it's very uh, difficult task. That That is normal thing. That is something which is seen everywhere in every aspect of our life. That's what I'm trying to say. But how to overcome it? If you, are, if you are a good driver, you do drive a car. Maybe initially you were very scared to do that. But now you're very good at it. So how are you good at it? You must have practiced it. So if this is happening with you, Malibu, it will happen on the first question. It will happen on the second question, the third and the fourth. But I'm sure when you will be on your 150th or 200th question, you will be a pro in that. You will be like, okay, ma'am, I can tell you how to solve this MCQ. So maybe the first, second, third, fourth can be a challenge. But if you keep on practicing, if you keep on doing mistakes, I would say that when you're practicing, do as many mistakes as possible. Don't be scared. Don't judge yourself when you commit a mistake. I used to do this. Like uh, if in FR, I am solving a question related to group accounts, like the MCQ. So I would first solve the whole set of MCQs related to group accounts. And then I used to mark it that, okay, out of uh, 20 MCQs, I correctly answered, let's suppose 15. So I used to calculate the percentage. So this is the percentage of marks I'm expected to get. But that is the first attempt I'm doing. When I will give my actual exam, I must have practiced so many times. And that will increase my percentage to a higher level that will increase my percentage to a higher level. So that's what I'm trying to say. Initially, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to feel it's new. It's very okay to commit mistakes. It's very okay to do silly mistakes. It's fine. Just don't get, you know, afraid of it or don't judge yourself or your knowledge or uh, whether you'll be able to pass the exam or not. 
based upon your first attempt of solving the kit. Once you will be getting accustomed to the type of question asked in that very topic, I am very sure when you will be solving the kit a little bit more ahead, maybe the 20th or the 22nd question, you will get some confidence. Just tell me honestly, when you solve the kit, don't you get confidence? You do get confidence, right? Whenever you're solving the kit and the questions go right, even if one question goes right, do you get confident that I can do it? Right? So this is the confidence which will help you in the actual exam and that will make you feel excited to solve the paper. So see, practice, if I make a chain here, practice will lead to confidence. Confidence will lead to no stress in the exam and you'll be excited to solve the exam. And I want this stage for every one of you who are here, I want this stage that you're excited to solve the paper in your actual exam. You will be stressed if you have not done practiced. If you have not practiced, you will not be confident. If you will not be confident, you'll be stressed. Or, oh my God, what will happen? This happened to me in my AAA paper, very honest with you. I didn't do a good practice in my AAA paper. And uh, due to some reasons, I, I think I prepared in around uh, 25 days. So there I didn't do good practice. When I saw the paper, I was very stressed. And I just literally passed at a very low score that was not that good enough. But I would say that I didn't practice well. I guess it was a 60, but I didn't practice good. So I was stressed. So I, you know, when I sat in the exam, I was like, I might fail. That was the first time I felt that I might fail. So when you give the exam, your situation should be such that you're like, I will surely pass. If the pass rate is 50%, I am out of those 50% who will pass because I did so good preparation. So if your preparation is good, your practice is good, you'll be confident. Okay, so let's read out what the student is saying. Uh, Ms. Gupta, how can I stay motivated to practice? Because sometimes it's a challenge, especially if you have limited practice time as I'm employed full time and trying to balance family life. Okay. This calls for because you explained them so clearly during classes. Yes, Malibu. Thank you. Okay, so Raquel, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. Uh, so you're saying that how to get motivation to practice. If you know a concept, if you know a concept, uh, if you ask me personally, I first time when I got to know about the journal entries, I was around uh, 15 years old. The first time I got to know about debits and the credits. So my father was into this field. I used to accompany him to his lessons. He's also a lecturer. So I used to accompany him just for food. I went to one of his lecture and he was teaching the debit and the credit there. And I was just getting fascinated about that, you know, that how things are happening. It's like everything was fitting into the right place. I was getting that it's a very logical thing that uh, whatever comes in and whatever goes out, we are just calculating it. It's just a way of, you know, keeping record that what came in, what went out. So I was very fascinated by that concept because I know the reason behind that concept. I got to know the why. I was always behind the why. So I was fascinated about it. Then when I came back home, I didn't have any other knowledge, but I just knew the golden rules of accountancy. And I knew those three rules, whatever comes in is debit, whatever goes out is credit, debit the receiver, credit the giver, and uh, the other one, debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gain. That's all I knew. And I know the reason behind that. Okay, I just didn't cram it. I knew the reason because my dad explained it in the class. Now, when I came back, I was just asking my father, can you please ask me journals? I was getting so much fun in that. Like doing the question, I used to terribly answer wrong because I was just, you know, new to it. He would ask me a sales entry. I would say debit the sales credit, whatever. So I was doing mistakes, but still I was knowing the concept. 
by doing the mistakes whenever i passed a wrong journal my father used to correct me and i got to know the concept better so when you are interested in that concept i would say interest is the biggest factor rakel interest is the biggest factor so if you are interested by any subject if you don't take it as a burden if you are interested if you're getting fun if you're excited about it and you have the curiosity if you are just doing it for the sake of doing i mean you're not living a life whatever you're doing doing acca doing any subject you should be interested in it you should be happy to get more knowledge from that particular uh, course not just you know living uh, you're not just doing it for the sake of doing just getting a 50 and passing acca so that i can get a job no enjoy the process by enjoying the process i mean know that you are someone who are getting this knowledge and there are people out there who don't have any knowledge about accountancy right so yes ali i will share the planner so knowing the concept getting interested in that concept will give you the motivation to practice once you take this subject as a burden once you take this qualification as a burden nobody can help you then you will be just doing it not living it not understanding it later on when you become in qualified acca if someone asks you about ifrs you'll be like oh i did it some time back i don't remember but if you study it with the zeal if you study it with the motivation with the interest you will be able to answer the person after even after qualification so basically what i'm trying to say here is that the practice motivation will come only if you have interest and it should be their interest should be there then only you should be giving anything if you don't have interest i would say just leave the qualification now there's no purpose of doing it just for getting a job you can you can do lots of things in life if you just want to get a job you should have interest in that qualification subject whatever you're doing so just develop it change your perspective of taking a subject or of doing anything in life and you will get the motivation to practice if this doesn't give you motivation just think about why you're doing this what is the reason behind doing this qualification okay so i would say that would motivate you further to put in the best effort the hard effort so that you can just you have to just give a best effort for the next 45 days i mean 45 days of your life and you will be doing something this big as acca right to tell so i hope you're getting the point here develop the interest and you will be able to practice you will have curiosity if you know the concept you will have the curiosity to see that how what are the type of questions being asked are you good at those concepts or not so i was always excited and i see many students here like uh, malebu and uh, i can see many other students as well who regularly join the classes clarence fragai samson all these students they are always excited to solve the mcqs so even you so just, just make sure that you develop that interest and you're able to solve the questions and even if you do mistakes you should be happy about it because they are also helping you to learn so that mistakes can be made many mistakes can be made but before the exam so as many mistakes as you make before the exam that will ensure you that you don't make any mistake in the exam so i hope you're getting that any other doubts related to your uh, performance or related to your preparation phase you want to communicate anything you want to discuss apart from this any issues you are facing okay i think understanding the principles is a major problem so ma'am how can we understand the principles at first glance or so uh samson principles yeah okay principles uh, samson they will be understood see most of the times in the classes i do tell you about the logics but principles you will understand by just thinking it's a chain of thoughts if there is a rule just think in fr what is my first objective you have done the conceptual framework right the first objective is to give relevant information the second objective is 
what is the second objective give the material information so whatever is relevant whatever is material i have to present that to my users this is why i'm preparing the financial statements so that the users can make a decision based upon the financial statements this is the objective what is the meaning of relevance what is the meaning of materiality you guys have done in conceptual framework so whenever you're taking a rule let's take the rule of ia 16 revaluation Revaluation gain goes through statement of other comprehensive income, but revaluation loss goes through statement of profit and loss. This is the rule. Let's understand but what is the principle behind this rule. Why would you take a gain through OCI and why would you take a loss through PNL? Even if I didn't know this rule, how could I have made this rule? I will say relevant information. That means I want to give a clear picture. I want to give true. I, I want to give a neutral, timely and understandable information, basically. So if I talk about a revaluation gain, why do I have property, plant and equipment to use it in my uh, production process? But what is revaluation? Revaluation is the increase in value of an asset, right? In the increase in the fair value of that asset. But my motive to use that PPE is not the increase in fair value. My objective is production process. So my objective is production process and revaluation is something secondary. Just relate to it. Revaluation is something secondary. My ultimate objective or my primary objective is to use the asset in the production process. That's why it is falling under IS-16 property, plant and equipment. So if the revaluation gain happens, if the revaluation gain happens, will it be relevant to the user to know it? He wants to know how much of the asset are you using for the production process. If the fair value of that asset increases, he will say, okay, I, I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, I don't want to know it that much. Just tell me that how did you use your asset or how much revenue you, create, uh, you created because of that asset. So basically what I'm trying to say here, if you have a machinery, a plant in your factory, the fair value of machinery and plant is not that relevant to you, but how much units of production you're doing with that machinery is more relevant to you. So if I keep this concept in my mind, I would say that this revaluation gain is unrealized because it is not meeting my primary objective. Not because I'm not in cashing it, the money is not coming into my bank, but my primary objective is not being met. So I would say that it will go into OCI. Why into OCI? Just because the standard says that unrealized gains goes into OCI? No. If you see any set of financial statements, just Google it today, annual report of any company, your favorite company is listed. The first page will have the statement of profit and loss in the financial side. I, uh, like first page will have some qualitative information, but when I talk about actual financial statements, there will be P&L first. Then you will have statement of other comprehensive income. So this is the second thing which any user will see. So less important things are listed in the statement. And if I say revaluation gain, isn't it a less important thing? Just because I explained you the primary objective is production process and not the gain. So if I was supposed to make a rule, if I was the person setting these standards, I would say that if a less important gain is happening, let's take, let's take it to less important financial statement. So what is the less important financial statement? Other comprehensive income. So how is this principle coming? This, is princip this principle is coming from common sense. This is not coming from anywhere else. It's not written in any book. The books just state the rule. They never talk about the logic. This logic is coming from the tutor or it is coming from your own common sense. Just think about it, relate to the things. Then why the loss goes into PNL? Let's think about that also. Just be very honest with me. Uh, if you guys take money from your parents, you made a gain on that money by investing it. Your parents will be like, oh, wow, good. You've made a gain. That's too good. You're a very good child. But if you make a loss, will they be more affected by the gain you made or the loss you created to their money? They gave you some money, you invested in shares and you made a loss. What will be more affecting to them? 
that you made a gain or that you made a loss their money rising will be a happy point for them no doubt but their money drowning will it not concern them more do you agree with me on this that losses are more concerning and more alarming if somebody has invested into your business just think about yourself if you have given money to someone if you're making gains you will be happy i have invested in stock market personally whenever i make gains i'm like oh okay i'll just go to my uh, software to my uh, app and i'll see okay 12% return wow very good but the day i see a downfall i am extremely worried about it i am not that happy with the gain how much i am sad with the loss so losses affect the investor more if that is the case then this is what we call prudence losses affect you that's why you accrue the losses that's why you show the losses as and when they occur so this is the principle from where is this principle coming general life general understanding common sense that losses affect you more you need to report them as soon as possible as and when they occur because they will affect the user while making the decision so whenever the loss is there whether it is due to primary objective secondary objective no relation to it whenever there is a loss i would say it should be shown in the first important statement and what is the first important statement statement of profit and loss so are you getting that how you have to think when you draft a rule or when you interpret a rule how you apply the principle here are you getting this uh samson i guess you asked this question right so just think with your common sense and you will get your answer if you don't get your answer yourself i am here just ask me that my why this rule is there i'll give you a reason for it okay so let's see what's the another doubt okay i appreciate your suggestion i think it's because i get frustrated whenever i am unable to solve a particular problem that's very common rakel just you know take a break when you're frustrated and uh, just look at the answer ask the doubt on the group we'll help you out but just keep on going just 45 days of hard work and you'll be done with this exam i want to get help to build my confidence in journal entries i was exempted from f3 so i would love to have help with journal entries yes sure you can connect to me on the whatsapp i'll help you out on that so i hope we all are clear on this now is there any further doubt or any communication you want to have i'll be sharing this updated planner it will be uploaded on the portal and i'll also share on the whatsapp group so i hope there is no doubt and uh, just make sure that this session this is the first and the last session we will have for this type of communication informal one then the next class onwards we will be working on the concepts and the practice questions so i feel you have that motivation now that you will not procrastinate or deviate yourself from the plan and this will help you yield good results and that's a guarantee if you follow whatever i've said if you keep the why in your mind if you don't procrastinate you do the honest practice no one can stop you from passing this paper so all the best to all of you and let me know in case of any doubts on the whatsapp groups which you are part of and meet you in the next session with the group accounts question so all the best for uh, your preparation for the reset batch as well as the normal batch take care good night and see you in the next live class